Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for logging on to this afternoon's session on Penang Spotlight, Island Hospital's 2021 plans for expansion and capturing the medical traveler. Uh, when we look at medical tourism, Malaysia, as we heard today morning, has made significant inroads. Within uh, Malaysia, Penang is having a growing presence and really looking at significant opportunities to grow and represent the country for medical tourism. Uh, this session looks specifically at the initiatives undertaken by Island Hospital uh, during 2020 and how in a year where it has been difficult, the initiatives they've taken, the investments they've made, which they view uh, as a bedrock and a building foundation for the future. Uh, to share these views, we have uh, Stephanie Lee with us the Chief Operating Officer at Island Hospital. Uh, good afternoon, Stephanie, and, and thank you for, again, supporting Medical Festival Asia and uh, sharing your insights uh, with our audience today. Uh, so on that note, I will pass the floor to you to maybe give a little bit of a, an added background on yourself and um, your presentation today. Thank you, thank you, Lauren. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Pleasure to be here uh, to share our stories of how we actually moved for the last 24 years uh, since 1996, uh, venturing into medical traveling um, journey, and as well as uh, how do we actually prepare ourselves for the future. Yeah, uh, I actually have prepared uh, a couple of slides uh, to share and um, Hopefully that you will find it uh, insightful and also um, feel free uh, to let us know, to drop us your contact if, if you have any doubts or any clarification to make. Um, as I mentioned, Island AG started in 1996. Um, we will be actually moving into our silver anniversary next year. Yeah. Um, currently, we are actually running with 300 beds. And um, it is actually a very near our expansion plan. Uh, we actually started our journey as early as 2016. Um, when Island first started um, in 1996, uh, slowly we are actually pivoting ourselves towards the uh, medical traveler scene. Yeah. Um, as early as during the millennium years, we actually have gained our strong footage in the regional market, uh, primarily in uh, Indonesia, Medan. Uh, we actually had the uh, first mover advantage um, in Indonesia, and we continue to build on the strong presence from Indonesia since then. Yeah. Um, with that, there was also the push and the pressure for expansion. Um, the demand from Indonesia remained very strong, and with the uh, expanded wing of the 300 base, we are actually hopeful that we will be actually serving a greater need of our regional patients. Yeah. Um, with that, we are actually started to look at expansion project. Uh, we actually first got into the drawing block in uh, 2016. Yeah. Um, we actually finally have actually made some progress in the expansion plan. So the way that I look at the expansion plan it is not uh, only involving the brick and mortar of the hospital. Um, we are even more uh, eager to work on the software of building the hospital and equipping the hospital. Uh, one of the um, areas that we are actually particularly uh, mindful when we actually expand will be on the data sharing and the records management. Um, with that, that actually drives us to look at um, the EMR uh, preparedness of the hospital. Um, when we actually move into the new era of the expanded facility. Yeah. So um, we actually started to look at um, EMR, the options to manage our records and also uh, with the mind of managing our patient journey and also the clinical and medical journey of the patient. 
uh, when the uh, new hospital is actually up. So um, the early days in 2018, we actually started to plan to digitize our medical records uh, as a whole uh, in preparation for the new expanded wing. Um, back then, the mind is actually to look at giving ourselves time to actually roll up um, the new uh, platform of managing our records. And with that, we actually wanted a year of stabilization so that we will continue to refine our processes, uh, looking at supporting a greater need and a, a scalable patient load with the new expanded wing. So um, I would like to actually point at um, since 2018, we actually have started scanning through the markets um, software available and which are the one that is relevant to actually to be deployed in our hospital. So uh, we actually launched our uh, EMR implementation less than two years ago. And, and currently we are actually have run live for about nine months into it right now. Um, we were actually very glad um, with the support and also the effort put in by all the stakeholders uh, mainly the, the doctors and as well as our nurses. We are actually on the 100% adoption rate, uh, fully integrated um, in terms of clinical notes clerking, uh, as well as the interfaces with various uh, uh, system packs, uh, LIS, so that we actually make it seamless for our users and as well as the patients to assess their records. So with this in mind, we are actually looking at a paperless environment and also a speedy turnaround uh, when we actually see our patient in, in terms of records assessed, medical records assessed. Yeah. While the actual work of the construction is ongoing, we continue to refine our processes internally in the existing facility, uh, preparing ourselves with the uh, opening of the new hospital. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of the hardware of the building, uh, we started to work on building our new hospital in 2018. We actually had our groundbreaking. Uh, we call it the Island Medical City as a whole. Uh, it is not only how Using the hospital facility, uh, but we are actually looking at the future needs of our patients that will actually traveling abroad with companions. Uh, the need for accommodation, um, that's why that we are actually looking at uh, a hotel within the entire development. Um, the hotel is specifically built for medical travelers. Uh, to support our internal needs of the hospital patients. Yeah. And with that, there will be a, another block of medical suite which will be coming in in uh, next phase uh, to actually support uh, the greater need of the healthcare industries uh, to be able to stay close enough to the hospital. Yeah. Um, currently, um, my backdrop is actually the current hospital. Yeah. Um, it's also a direct view of the existing work of the um, expanded wing, expanding wing of, of a new hospital, yeah, which will be expected to actually open our door in year 2022. Um, active construction phase is ongoing right now, uh, despite the uh, current challenges that we are facing. Um, with a change of certain construction method and also retune our construction program. Uh, but glad to say that um, the construction schedule is very much according to what we have actually planned out. Yeah. Um, next, I will very much would like to actually touch upon um, in terms of an overview of our expanded wing. Um, we are a small hospital of 300 beds right now, located in Georgetown. Yeah, uh, it is actually a food heaven uh, for many. 
Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it is also a, a place for them to actually seek medical care. Uh, with that, uh, the existing hospital is actually sitting on this position. Um, the extension and the expansions of the hospital will be actually directly across the road, which will be actually linked with the underpass. So the existing hospital of the of 300 beds will be actually grow into a 600 bed facility immediately with our expanded wing. Yeah. Um, today I'm actually looking at uh, one of the main dimensions that we look at is actually digitizing our records as the essential and the critical. A pathway for us to pivot ourselves in running an expanded a facility of 600 base. Uh, given that the footprint of the new facility it is actually not directly connected and is actually a huge facility to actually cross share the uh, patient records, uh, uh, that will actually make the entire uh, healthcare delivery seamless within Island Hospital and uh, paperless. Um, various um, goals that we were trying to achieve uh, in terms of accessibility of records uh, primarily. Um, immediately, we actually could see that since the rollout of the EML, uh, we actually see the uh, access of the medical records uh, may be in a and &E or outpatient consultation setting uh, is actually very seamless and uh, immediate. Um, so much so that um, the medical practitioner actually have full control of the records uh, without even have to suffer uh, minutes of wait uh, previously in order for the records for them to actually make a sound judgment of assessing the previous history of the patients. Um, Penang, relatively small. Real estate uh, space remains challenging for us running a hospital. Um, with the EMR, we actually will be able to be more efficient and also to service plan uh, our facility uh, to make it one stop uh, seamlessly. Are better. Um, in terms of logistics, we rely a lot on the uh, manual manpower to actually transport and transfer records from one area to another. Um, with EMR, uh, all, all this is actually replaced by um, computers and it is actually immediately assessed by our practitioner. Um, that makes the entire process seamless and also we actually able to devote our logistic resources, uh, things that matter that will be able to encourage high touch with the patient and actually given more attention on the patients. Um, the quality of care of the patients is improved, particularly that um, our team will be able to actually devote more time uh, to, to actually look at patients than um, actually having duplicated entries or, or, or work into the records keeping. Yeah. Um, efficient, um, which is very important, uh, particularly in the area that we are actually very strong at, uh, serving medical travelers, which um, time planning for our patients coming in must be very efficient. And that actually improve us the, the, the time efficiency of them making their plans to come in and making their plans to actually go up after the treatment. Um, that actually improve the accuracy of our medical treatment and actually care plan for our patient in terms of uh, reducing human error, mitigating mathematical errors, uh, for example, looking at the uh, medication instructions uh, with good template for our doctors that actually preset for their own uh, treatment plan. Uh, that actually is a lot of our journey for our patients so that they are actually very informed 
and the expectation is very well managed. Um, a little bit on our journey of EMR. Yeah, uh, it actually spent from, uh, we actually spent a very long time uh, scanning through the vendors in the market. Um, we actually have the top tier of the EMR vendors. Uh, we actually have worked with uh, international EMR vendor as well. Um, it it takes us about one and a half years to implement the entire system which is edgy on a big bang basis, um, may it be the hospital information system, or may it be the back end um, clin clinical plugging of our doctors, as well as our nurses, as well as interfacing with various medical devices and also databases, types, uh, LRS, uh, namely the, the more important ones. Yeah. Um, we actually pushed for live on the 29th March uh, this year. Uh, it was a, a very difficult decision. Uh, it was a tough decision to actually charge ahead with the live implementation, given that uh, in Malaysian landscape, uh, we were very much in uh, movement control order at that point of time, uh, which means that we are entirely very much on our own. Um, the support is extended remotely uh, as our vendor is actually sitting in Singapore. Yeah. Um, however, we actually see the, the other angle from pushing it forward, um, looking at we will be actually given more pace and time to uh, refine the system, to actually work with the system and actually drive the entire change management. Uh, with that, um, nine months after implementation, uh, we are actually hopeful uh, during the next anniversary year of the EMR, we should be really uh, able to improve to the system to the level that we are ready to support the expanded hospital. Um, some challenges while we are actually rolling out the system Big Bang. Uh, we are looking at building the, all the stakeholders in the hospital, may it be from the administrative team, support team, uh, housekeeping in, in terms of workflow planning, uh, as well as IT team, um, the doctors, the nurses, as well as our allied health professionals. So this is actually a big impact project to everyone in the hospital, uh, but we were not fearful because we are actually looking at the improvement that it brings uh, from the implementation, which as today, uh, we actually have managed to, to realize all the improvement that we are actually expecting from day one. Gladly to say that it, this um, can only be done with all the support in the hospital. Uh, from the doctors down to all our people in the administrations. Some of the areas that uh, we are actually integrating, we actually have a very good impact yeah, in, in terms of moving the functionality and the benefits that we actually able to reap from the implementation. Uh, I think the list is extensive. Yeah, um, this is uh, mainly one of the few. Uh, moving on um, how we actually interface with the lab, the radiological order, and as well as uh, immediate transparent reporting process, and which we will be able to use it as a push of data to our patients. Yeah, uh, particularly that is critical where our patient is actually at the cross border, uh, which we, they will be able to assess to their own health parameters immediately. Um, pharmacy prescription is actually refined, yeah, uh, in a way that is actually assisted our doctors that will be able to treat and alert some of, uh, of the orders and as well as the clinical indicators of the entire uh, drugs ordering and prescription. Um, EMR, the electronic documentation, um, that to us 
is actually make it a fast turnaround and also to reduce or actually mitigate um, the risk of slow records uh, retrieval, uh, the issues that comes with it, a delay in extending care, and those are eliminated entirely with the EMR. Um, with all this, it actually adds on and to support the needs of teleconsultation, which um, next, uh, we actually do see that uh, we make our teleconsultation very seamless, and uh, we are actually seeing that the doctors in action, sharing the uh, some of the clinical parameters and the records with our patients directly via Zoom, yeah, during the teleconsultation, which the patient will be able to know and participate in their health uh, parameters directly. Yeah. Um, this will be making the uh, entire um, ward and nursing as well as our doctor's practice in the admission setting seamless uh, with, with the uh, availability of how we call it computer on wheels um, which immediate uh, clinical plucking can take place and information can be shared immediately. Um, the first part of the presentation is very much talking about the software yeah, of the uh, digitizing the records. Um, next is actually how we actually moving into building the future uh, of our hospital. Um, this is actually the um, build up of our hospital uh, in terms of the center of excellences. Um, the way we actually look at center of excellences is actually one stop uh, and also uh, efficient for treatment and clinical care. Um, with the uh, new expanded wing, we actually see that it's actually uh, extended uh, services uh, to complete the existing hospital uh, with the extended service which in the area of particularly oncology, which we are currently lacking uh, in radiotherapy and nuclear med. Our approach to look at our expanded wing is very much looking at um, health screening, as well as uh, we were very strong in the surgical oncology uh, currently. Um, looking at providing the full spectrum of care, uh, even looking at the rehab after the surgical intervention as well. Um, a bit of data sharing from MHDC, our Malaysian Healthcare Travel Council, uh, we actually could see that the most popular funnel for our medical travelers to come in is actually through health screening. Yeah, uh, may it be from the country of Vietnam, Indonesia, China, India, and Myanmar. Uh, we are particularly strong in Indonesia. Yeah, uh, we could see almost half of our patients came in to, to look for health screening to start with. Yeah. Um, a, a bit of the uh, snapshots of the way that we actually see how screen, our health screening center will be in the future. Um, our health screening is not looking at um, the general health screening, uh, but we are also looking at the endoscopy service as part of the health screening service uh, for our patients. Yeah. Um, our approach on looking at oncology um, is actually looking at a very holistic approach from the top head to the toe, yeah, how we actually look at it. Um, we were very actually active in the deep brain stimulation procedure, um, looking at a, a way to treat a Parkinson. Um, some of the other area that we were particularly strong at will be on the uh, gastroenterology service, uh, which is also uh, a funnel an important funnel for our medical travelers to come in. 
And that is actually a, a feeder into our strong uh, surgical intervention team. Um, in the year of 2019, we actually um, have treated 179 patients from the colorectal cancer. Uh, we were actually very strong at uh, running or uh, actually performing a ripple procedure in a keyhole method. Some statistics on um, oncology. Um, we actually have actually run uh, close to 10,000 uh, pathology lab tests. And from there, we actually have detected about more than 1,002 cancers. And from there, we actually could see we operated on more than 1,000 patients from that and administered uh, about 1,200 chemotherapies. Yeah. Um, when we're actually looking at the uh, services of the oncology, uh, we actually could see in um, island landscape, um, we actually diagnosed more than 1,002 uh, cancers. And from there, 80% of them will actually require surgical intervention or chemotherapy. Um, what we could not do right now will be on the radiotherapy, which we actually see that 50% um, of the 1,002 cancer patients that we detected will require some form of radiotherapy as well as nuclear med. Um, looking at it with the newly expanded with uh, extension of services is actually possible. Uh, this is one of the areas that we are very excited and, and we hope that uh, this is also a piece of good news for our patients uh, that will be able to um, get treatment within island, uh, which we cannot do right now. Some of the looking forward uh, facility and services uh, with the newly extended wing uh, from now will be the PET CT, uh, very much on the diagnostic area, um, radiotherapy directly with the entire linear and two bunkers to be built, as well as the uh, chemo and biotherapy, uh, a, a newly expanded uh, chemotherapy service. Uh, to also looking at minimally invasive open surgery to, to treat our cancer patient and very much on the follow-up post-care uh, with a good support group, uh, looking at able to actually support the recovering and post-treatment cancer patients. Yeah, um, the existing cancer treatment services, we are actually looking at expanding it with the scalable of uh, patients coming in for the next spectrum of treatment. We, we look at, uh, we want to maintain the dignity of our patients, of our cancer patients. Uh, for a start, we are actually looking at providing a one-stop service, uh, which their, their privacy can also be actually looked into. And also we want to actually add life to the entire area of, of treatment and also the uh, center of excellence um, building for the next phase of our service extension. Yeah, uh, with that, uh, we are actually hopeful. Um, when we actually meet next, we actually would see that the entire building of our new expanded thing will be up, uh, which we are actually anticipating to open up our doors in 2022. Yeah. We, we hope that you find it useful uh, uh, with our humble sharing uh, where we are right now and what we aspire to be in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. That uh, that was very insightful. Um, I think what is admirable is that in, in uh, quite a difficult year, not only have you undertaken an EMR project, uh, you've also taken on a new hospital development. 
and at the same time address uh, the entire change of process flows, treatment mix that obviously 2020 has bought. Um, I guess on a, on a lighter note, how have you simply managed and, and what, how did you have the courage to implement an EMR, launch it on 29th of March during uh, movement control orders when there were already so many changes and communications internally that you had to do with doctors, the patients, with the new restrictions, that is uh, uh, that is taking on a, a lot of effort <laughs> all at the same time. I, I think that it actually, we actually had a very good working team. Yeah, uh, we are actually very grounded as we are actually growing from a very small setup. We are very closely needed. Yeah, um, not only the administrator uh, of the hospital, uh, but together with the input from our medical team, our doctors, our specialists, as well as our nurses. Yeah, um, it seems to be impossible at the beginning. Yeah, I, I think that drives us and motivates us. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, along the way, uh, the, the small success that we actually able to achieve continue to motivate us to move to the next step. Oh, that's incredible because I think uh, not only is it sound impossible in the start, uh, even listening to it now, knowing you've achieved it, it still sounds like an impossible task. So congratulations on on that. Um, you also did mention it was or is a small setup, uh, the hospital, um, but that is really underplaying it because it was a strong, uh, it was a small setup, but it's now going and more than doubling in size. Uh, that is quite an undertaking. I, I saw during the slides, uh, of course, that um, radiotherapy is one area you're looking to offer. With this expansion, is this expansion focused solely on oncology, obviously, and health screening? Or were, do you expect uh, the additional capacity to be filled just through the services you can't offer or an increase in patient flow uh, as well? Uh, I would say that it is not only oncology that we will be focusing. Uh, I think we actually have a list of very strong uh, center of excellences. Yeah. Um, why we, we actually feature oncology is something that we are not complete, that we are not comprehensive right now. So that is the area that we are actually looking at, that we will be able to given the opportunity to service the full spectrum of the cancer care. Yeah, but there are areas that we are very particularly strong at, uh, namely as orthopedic. Yeah, so uh, if I would have the time, I would like to run through all the other excellences because uh, the other thing that we are very excited to look at will be the uh, robotic surgery for orthopedic. Yeah, as well as our neurosciences. Yeah. Uh, namely uh, the deep brain uh, simulation surgery that we actually perform for Parkinson, uh, which is very niche and unique uh, in the region. Yeah. Um, but when you're looking at all of these extra, um, I guess, specialties, um, there's a lot of communication to be done with, with patients. Um, with regards to the EMR and the investments that you've put towards digitizing the hospital, are there components or elements where you created different touch points for patients or different ways that you're maybe interacting with patients uh, to convey how digitally ready you are? Um, certainly, uh, immediately we actually could see that uh, um, the, the way the new norm of pandemic uh, it is actually really jumping into teleconsultation. So our teleconsultation is very similar uh, to the extent that we will be able to share some of the clinical parameters. Yeah, the patients will be able to see directly looking into the system and dive in into their own health parameters. Yeah, so um, in terms of patient journey, we, we see that we really will be able to break borders to reach out to our patients cross-border easier. Yeah. Uh, we've facilitated uh, appointment system and even with the reminder for their next follow-up. Uh, of course, that uh, we cannot do very much right now, looking at the border remain closed. But these are the things that I, I think it is significant, uh, particularly when we actually deal with our international patients. Um, for 
these additional bed capacities that are coming on board for Island Hospital, uh, are there certain countries that you're looking at? Um, how do you envision these extra beds uh, and serving the extra patient demand that there is? Is there organic demand you're seeing growing for people coming into Penang or are there certain countries you feel you'll be looking at uh, closely going forward? Yeah, um, before pandemic, uh, we actually embarked on this expansion journey, um, mainly looking at the organic demand from the Indonesia primarily. Yeah, but um, there are also uh, other uh, countries that we will be going through, but um, the, the main bulk is actually still relatively coming from Indonesia. Yeah, but Indonesia, we actually started off very strongly in Medan, but over the years, uh, up to before the pandemic strike, we will actually have expanded into Jakarta, Surabaya. Yeah, uh, with that we could see that, that there's a lot more that we can do uh, within the Indonesia, but uh, definitely we are actually looking at our doors also has been now to actually look at other countries. Uh, filling up the base uh, is very much for us is the push is actually from the demand to, to actually expand uh, rather than we actually need to look at pent up demand to fill the, the newly expanded um, When you're talking to I guess some of your international patients this year um, when, and looking at pent up demand during during the festival so far when we have had different sessions um, it really does look like it has not been lost treatment, but deferred treatment. Um, and there is a concern that with this deferred treatment, the pent up demand, there is a significant amount. Um, are we or our hospitals uh, being able to cope with it when borders do open? Um, and how have you just helped your patients or stayed in touch during this year when it's been difficult to keep that mind share? Uh, we continue to engage with our patients uh, cross border. Yeah, even though there is actually travel restriction, borders remain closed. Uh, up to date, uh, since uh, end of March till right now, we actually have conducted close to thousand teleconsultation as well as delivered uh, medications to our patient cross the borders. Yeah, so uh, we continue to see the trend of teleconsultation to be ramping up. Yeah, um, that's how we continue to engage our patient. Um, unfortunately, um, they would not be able to travel to, to seek immediate treatment, um, but they are actually keeping very close to us. Uh, we continue to monitor and work with them. Yeah, um, they are very hopeful and eager for the borders to open and come back immediately if possible. I mean, I think when you're looking at border openings, uh, you have an, an amazing advantage. Not only have you invested in technology, in facility, um, in really growing the hospital's presence, you also have the advantage of Penang itself. The food is amazing. I know you are a seaside city. Uh, and uh, really, this is what uh, back in the, uh, in the origins of medical travel, Thailand was a tourism destination that became a medical destination. And I think your vision with uh, having Island City and uh, really focusing on the entire ecosystem that, that the island provides you, uh, it's very promising. And uh, we can't wait for uh, borders to open and actually come see the facilities in person. I guess to wrap up uh, today's session, with the number of initiatives that you have in place, is there a key takeaway that you could maybe share with the industry uh, and with our viewers today on just uh, you know what they can take away from this session and, and just uh, the big learning that maybe you have had this year. Um, for us, uh, the, the big learning is actually to sustain, to raise ourselves during this challenging time. Uh, we need to remain positive as well as we also need to remain cautious uh, in, in terms of our practice, our screening. Yeah. Uh, as we can see that in Malaysia, we are actually being hit the third wave. So we continue on to be resilient by making sure that everyone stays safe. And I think that we are actually staying agile to adapt to the new norm in the future. And um, they, we will need to actually 
um, live with the virus for the next one year immediately. So we won't be able to actually have the luxury of letting our gut down right now. So um, my message is stay safe and stay positive. No, thank you. I think that's a very inspiring note to end on. Um, so thank you again uh, for joining us today, taking the time out. And thank you to everyone tuning in uh, to this session. Uh, we look forward to returning tomorrow. Thank you.